Heavenly Father, we ask for your presence this morning as we take up this study. Uh, I ask for your help that I can uh, get through this um, in a clear fashion and uh, move beyond this uh, particular um, obstacle in this, this presentation that I'm taking so much time on. We ask that you'd pour your latter rain out upon us and prepare the hearts and minds of those that are listening this, wherever they might be, in Jesus' name. Um, amen. The presentation after lunch yesterday, not yesterday, on Sabbath, um, didn't go as I wanted it to. I had like five points that I wanted to make. I had to make Theodore's correction. Then I, I added the, the information from Stephen on the 151, 53 soldiers that come to Elijah and the combination of Ezekiel 4 and Revelation 7. Then I wanted to review these lines and then I wanted to say some things about Fatima. And so we broke for lunch and then I, I ate rather quickly and I come in here and I started putting the material on the board. And towards the end, I'm going to blame this on Daniel. Daniel came in and we started talking and the last line I was working on is this line here that I had down here. And I'd have to go back to the tape just like you would, but I think what happened is that I put a wrong date on that. So when I got to that point in the presentation yesterday, everything started breaking down in, in my mind. Um, so I just moved away from it. But I don't want to move away from this. I want to discuss it and I want to make sure that I get it right. So I'm going to go back over all the lines today. And I, when things like this happen, sometimes it's unfortunate, but sometimes... I figure it's okay that the Lord is wanting us to repeat some of these things. So this is like the third time through um, on some of these concepts. This up here is the future for America chiasm. Now, I don't know how to illustrate these things well necessarily, um, but this here is the Levitical chiasm and this is the Midnight chiasm. And I, I have them in here because I'm, I'm trying to show the connection with this history. And this dot, broken line is taking, for instance, this Levitical chiasm and it's expanding it. Same with this Midnight chiasm, it's expanding, putting more information over here. But the, the Levitical chiasm and the Midnight chiasm as it relates to the Future for America chiasm I'm trying to line up where it's supposed to go. You'll notice though, let's start, um, that with the Future for America chiasm, it, it begins in darkness. Every reform movement begins in darkness, but it ends in darkness. Um, in terms of 30 years old, when you get to 30 years old, you're at midnight. So you have, mid, you have darkness that begins this reform movement, and when's the darkness begin that precedes the reform movement of Future for America. 1957. Um, the Adventist Church publishes a book that marks the end of the third generation, beginning of the fourth generation, called Questions on Doctrine. The title itself, and the book upholds the title, demonstrates that they no longer understand true biblical doctrine. They have questions on doctrine. Uh, that third generation began with the publication of a book by W.W. W. Prescott, The Doctrine of Christ, where he gutted the, the prophetic message from the message of Adventism. That becomes the point of reference for Adventism. Ultimately, at the end of that generation, they publish a book back here in 1957, um, Questions on Doctrine. Um, demonstrating they're in darkness. So this 30-year chiasm, when, when Bronwyn shared that two Sabbaths ago, um, she had talked to me about it, and we were, we were laboring to see if it, this 30 years, the, 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 15, the middle of this chiasm, 15 years, was dead on. It was November 9th, 2004. We're at the Ozone Prophecy School, and her and I were laboring to try to figure out how this way mark and this way mark would be seven and a half and seven and a half. But as I thought it through, it don't have to be that way to still be, to still be accurate. Um, 
in the fall of 1996. That's the best I can recollect. I know why it was the fall of 1996 that we published the Time of the End magazine, but I don't really remember the month. I don't even, I don't know how I would go about finding that out. Um, but I know it was at the end of the year. So if you plug in seven years from 1989, it takes you to 1996, and then eight years um, takes you to 2004, the dead center, 15 years of this 30-year period. Um, and then, then I'm arguing, because it's a chiastic structure, that you've got to extend out eight years that takes you to 2012. And in this, among other things, this is a history of a movement, and I'm saying that 2012 is marking a significant step in the new movement. This is, it's one of the, over here in 1996, each of these waymarks have their own special characteristic. 1989, there's an increase of knowledge. 1996, the message is formalized. And then at the Ozone Prophecy School in 2004, that's the first time that we held an English-speaking prophecy school in the United States. I've been holding prophecy schools around the world in other countries, usually being translated into other languages. But we determined that we wanted to get the message recorded. So the first time we purposely did a meeting, uh, rented a place, set up the cameras, and what this was for is to put the message to that time in place. So ozone was purposeful uh, to put the message in place. Now we realize what it was doing is it was identifying all the stones from this history that had been um, gathered out of the quarry that were going to be laid in the foundation. So um, uh, we know this is an accurate description of this way, Mark, because when you get to Habakkuk's tables, it's the same thing. Habakkuk's tables, once again, is a summary of everything from, from here to the end of Habakkuk's tables. And from 2004 to the end of Habakkuk's tables uh, in 2013, you're having the foundation laid. So from 1989, 2001, stones quarried. Uh, then it's put in place in 2004. But if you're going to use the chiastic structure as a guide, then what it's telling me is that eight years from 2004 takes you to 2012. And by um, the testimony of, of, of the other side, it's in 2012 where uh, Byant and Lambert family meets in Wells. They begin studying secretly together. Um, and I'm using the word secret on purpose because uh, Byant's rebellion begins and his jealousy begins in 2009 and then in 2012 he's in the secret chambers formulating a plan with his cohorts, uh, Terry, Tess Lambert. So what I'm saying is in this chiasm of the Future for America movement, the movement of the priests, the issue of the counterfeit priest, of the foolish priest, is one of the primary waymarks. It's as, as primary as the formalization of the message. Okay, And then seven years later takes you to November 9th, uh, 2019, which is once again darkness. Yes? Where did we used to mark Acti activities of the enemies? What was it following? I can't remember. The act, yeah, that, that's an old one. Okay, and that's I'll leave it. Second Angel's message. Yeah, did just, we? just before. Did I we think. do it just before? Yeah. yeah, just before the Second Angel, I think. I'm pretty sure. Okay, uh, interesting. Go ahead. So, um, so that's what's guiding me on doing 7887, is the, the structure of the chiasm. And uh, why are the foolish priests going to be destroyed? A lack of knowledge. Okay, where do you get that from, Brother Larry? Hosea 4 6, I think, is where I'd go. And, uh, and this is all familiar ground for this movement, uh, but some of these things that were familiar years ago, we, hit, we don't hit on more recently, so it might be good to go back there because Hosea 4 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What knowledge are they destroyed because of? This is where the knowledge is put in place. This is the stones, and now in 2004, the, the, the foundation is laid. Um, so that's the knowledge 
that they have a lack of, but it is, it, is it because they have a lack of knowledge that they are destroyed? No. It's the next phrase in the verse. Next phrase in the verse. That's says, what I was going to say. Because thou has rejected knowledge, thee. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no what? No priest, no priest to me. Okay, so th it's here they're rejecting this knowledge. And in 2012, you know that's the case. Okay, because uh, Parminder's just waiting to break out his... his his dispensationalism and, and his infallibility, his Jesuit doctrines, um, he has rejected what has been established here. And he's come out and said that in this history he, he purposely lied because he, tried to, he, he did not believe what he was saying when he was supporting this message. He, he was lying, his own words, in order to keep peace, he was saying. Um, so this is purposeful on his part. Okay, so um, this needs to, this is a waymark that needs to be dealt with. Um, there's a little bit more over here where we'll deal with it. But in any case, right here, um, I'm plugging in the Levitical chiasm. I like the way the Levitical chiasm sounds. Okay, it's the 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 chiasm that's speaking to the Levites, to those in Adventism that are going to respond post July 18th. So I'm plugging it in right here. And this is the bigger, this dot 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 is breaking the history up that to me puts more context in the simple chiasm of the Levitical chiasm, which begins on March 27th, 2019, ends on March 27th, 2021, and the dead center is March 27th, 2020, and on March 27th, 2020, not so long ago, the Adventist Church proclaims this 100 days of prayer, okay, and it's the center, it's the center of the chiasm that establishes the theme of the chiasm. So this chiasm is about the Adventist church. What is March 27, 2021? It's the end of that chiasm. Yeah, I understand that. I'm saying the 100 days. The 100 days doesn't take you there. The 100 no. days takes you to, you're still in 2020. Um, so, but what is the event of March 27, 2021? We don't... Oh. Don't be asking hard questions, Brother Daniel. <laughs> um, there's some... In, the, in this line, um, some of these definite waymarks, you could, definite but in the sense that you can show that they're there, are still being established. Okay, there's something about something that's going to go on here, um, and I'll say it this way: six months. Would that be six, seven, eight, eight months before December 25th? Okay, there's something that's going to go on. What it is um, is still um, unanswered in my mind. It's, it, there's other there's other dates on these lines. It's the same way that they're they're hanging there. They're established. You can see them, but. We don't have them but nailed it down. But, but it would have something to do with that 100, 100 days, Adventism. I'm yeah, it, it's got, it's, it has to do with Adventism. Okay, so this, this is an extension of, of the history. I mean, there's all kinds of other waymarks you could put in here all the way through. But I've selected certain waymarks that I'm saying is speaking to this chiasm. This right here in one, two, three, is this over here. Okay, I'm just expanding it out. And in your notes, you can see the connection between November 9th. If you turn to um, page 3 of your notes, from November 9th, 1989, from the time of the end to March 27, 2019, is 1,533 weeks. Okay, so we're understanding 1533 to be a symbol of the manifestation of the power of God. So it's saying from, from here to here, God is manifesting His power. And then from January 14th back here, and what's January 14th? It's the first time that Paneum is preached 
unto this way mark down here, the last March 27th, 2021, isn't 1533 weeks, it's 1533 days. So this whole, this whole structure here from 1989 down to here is wrapped around two witnesses that this is a manifestation of the power of God, the whole history. Okay, so I'm putting this in here because... Um, these three steps in terms of Rafi and Paneum, on December 17th, 2016, the Lord removes his hand and from a foundational understanding. We, and then we understand Rafi and Paneum. Um, seven days later, we're in Bant, Holland, and we're presenting for the first time publicly Rafi and Paneum. Here we understand it. it we're having a, a study at midnight, okay, is when we're understanding it. It was after the Sabbath ended and we, the study went beyond midnight. Um, seven days later, we're, we've moved from Wales to Bant, Holland, have a meeting, and we, we present Rafi and Paneum, but the thing that I'm emphasizing in that presentation more than anything else is that his hand's been removed. I'm saying this is this is a parallel to him removing his hand from the fullness of the year mistake. But then 21 days after that, I'm in Canada, and right before I go to Canada, the Lord opens up the understanding of Paneum. Okay? It's more about Paneum than it is Raphia. The idea of Pan uh, opens up before us. So, I, I'm saying that this, hist this is the message here that gets opened up, that is the Midnight Cry message, along with, of course, Ezra 7, 9, the first step, and the chronology that comes later on. But because of this here, January 14th, being 1,533 days to here, it's placing an emphasis on Pan, the subject of Pan. And this hundred days of prayer here, when you read it, and it's in your notes, the statement by the Adventist Church, why are they calling for this hundred days of prayer? Because of the pandemic. So the pan, the, the characteristics of paneum are what are speaking to the plowing of Adventism. When we sp we've spoke a lot about plowing the Levites through the years. But we never really, I never really thought the Lord was actually going to get into history and turn some things upside down where you can actually see him plowing and see Adventism responding to the plowing. I mean, they, they don't know what they're praying for at this point um, in terms of the message that, that they're going to be confronted with. But they've been put into a place where they are seeking the Lord and, and there's going to be more of them that are serious about that um, heart work than there were of the priests, right? Because there's 12 disciples and 70 of that other group of disciples. So um, there are some serious people in Adventism now that are seeking the Lord and He's beginning to speak to their hearts. Um, so in this here, this is the center of this chiasm. It's clearly Adventism. And, and I think I have, for myself, I, have it under, I understand this way mark here. I haven't figured out yet how to, to articulate it, but it, it's the, in this history, on March 20, the last two presentations that we did in this school before I went into retirement, one was on March 27th, and the, next, the last one was on March 28th. And the one on March 27th, the, the title of that presentation was a shut door. And the title of the, the, the presentation on the 28th was 1863. Okay, 1863 is where Adventism set up the image of jealousy, where they set aside the, these two tables, replaced them with Uriah Smith's single table, removed the 2520, started a church, was in the middle of the Civil War, 1863, um, a major turning point. And 
and we know the quote where Sister White says, there are certain, and this is a broad paraphrase, there are different crises in the history of the nation and the church. Um, when, when these crises arrive, the light for that time is given. So in 1863, major crisis in the history of the movement, because it's changing from a movement to a church. It's the dead center of the Civil War, so it's a crisis for the nation. And the light that was given at that time was the health message. Okay, so, so everything's there in 1863. And what Adventism did is it, it went into rebellion. Okay, but in, in each history from Noah onward, Noah, Abraham, Moses, John the Baptist, in every history, every reform movement, there's a message of a shut door. Okay, and the message of the shut door in this history arrives in 1989. Okay, and the message was, we're living in the time period of Daniel 11.40, and the next verse, verse 41, is the Sunday law in the United States where the door is going to shut on Adventism. So for me, here, this is emphasizing that Adventism had been given a shut door message, as typified by Noah, let's say, but that they had rejected it in 1863. So this is speaking to Adventism. Okay, that's my whole point. This way Mark speaking to Adventism, this is an activity of Adventism. This will be about Adventism as well. Um, perhaps, um, I, I don't know what to conjecture because you're, you're well past July 18th, 2020 and you're heading towards December 25th, 2021 at that time. 2021. So, um, alright, so... What I'm saying is, here, I think it's kind of cool. I never noticed this till this, this, within the past 24 hours, that this reform movement begins with darkness, and it, of the 30 years, it ends in darkness, because it ends at midnight. And this is the midnight chiasm, okay, down here. And of course, we know this, we know we've worked through this more than once now. If you add these up, the American calendar way, they come to 327. And if you add them up by reversing the numbers in the European calendar way, they come to January 11th. Okay, and how, how do you do the European... January 11th would be like this, right? No, that's ours. No, it would be 1. That's ours. 11 1. Yes? Ours is no, January. January 1 11. Ours would be month, day, year. Theirs and theirs would be. Month, year. Uh, this is. That's. Either way. So which one's this? This one's European. Okay, so that's European. And this is US. Okay, and. Did you notice that um, here on January 11th, 2020, in the Midnight Chiasm, that one of the, the characteristics that we put in place is that the Lord had taken us down into the enemy's camp, opened up the book of Daniel. Now we see the entire vision of Daniel's last vision. Remember that? So here in the center of this chiastic structure, he's... He's opened up the temple. That's Ezekiel 1.1. 1, 1. Wheels are within wheels. At first they're confusing. Um, here, at the beginning, he's opening up the message of the two movements. Okay, it's all about a message. The two movements in 9.7. Um, and, and he's emphasizing that it's the, it's the two midnight cry messages from two movements. Uh, 977, Jeroboam is setting up a counterfeit worship service. Okay, um, This is the cleansing from 10,000, 9,700 go home, leaving 300 of Gideon's soldiers. Okay, The 30 is here. Um, so it's a separation of these two movements. 
But it's the message that they're proclaiming. Because in chapter 12 of 1 Kings, the last two verses, 33 and 34, maybe 34 and 35, it's mentioned twice that this feast that Jeroboam was setting up was on the eighth day of the, the 15th day of the eighth month. Is that how it reads? 15th day of the eighth. And that's what? August 15th, um, 1844. It's the midnight cry message. So this is, a, and and when the disobedient prophet comes, he says, "O altar, O altar." Okay, so it's a. This here is identifying two movements: one with a counterfeit midnight cry message, and a one with the true midnight cry message. So this is about a message. This the center point is the opening of the temple. The wheels within the wheel message. And then on January 11th, it's about the message being understood, Daniel's last vision. But if you remember, what we put in place there was this was 153. 153. And I, and I said that 153, among other things, means you have to prophesy again. Where do we get that from? Revelation. 10. Revelation let's go there. The last verse. Is it the last verse? And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And so, we can drop a zero, right? That's in Revelation 10, 11. So if we drop that zero, when are we to prophesy again? January 11th, if you can see it. Brother Welk in, in, in Texas noticed that and, and shared that. And it's there. It's January 11th, okay? Um, so, at midnight, the Lord now, after, after we went into hiding here, okay, we're, we're, we have... We end in this classroom. The School of the Prophets ends on March 28th. But over here we're going to have the camp meeting that's going to end on April 7th. And 150 days later, th five months later, I'm going to come out of retirement right here. So we've ha we have this hiding. We come out of hiding. Um, the Omega Movement's already not only proclaiming their, their second angel's message, they're in their midnight cry message as of August 29th, okay? And the Lord opens up to what our midnight cry message is in this history. And through this trying ordeal of 126 days, when we get to here, the message is opened, okay? And now the problem is, is trying to put this message into context. Um, so, this is the end here of the camp meeting at this place. Um, this is five months later, 150 days, and this is where they're in, in Germany, uh, this counterfeit movement saying to the women, you either put on pants or you receive the mark of the beast. On this day, they're having their baptismal ceremony on this day. And they're, what do they call it? Excommunicating Stephen and Odilio for upholding the second witness to November 9th through the application of chronology. So you can't separate out um, this Omega movement, a counterfeit latter rain message while the true latter rain message is going on. And we don't want to separate it out because we know that's part of the prophetic scenario. When we get to here and this, this midnight chiasm begins, it begins on 9-7. Nine, 7 9 times 7 is 63 days. Um, and 63 days takes us to November 9th, 63 days then takes us to January 11th, and 63 weeks takes us to here. So these things are all tied together. Is that day 327? Yeah, that's March 27th. 
that is to so I hope you understand what I'm doing I could I don't need to have this I'm plugging in here the beginning of the Levitical chiasm and in here I'm plugging in the midnight chiasm and then I'm just adding some way marks to put some um, logic better more thorough logic to it so over here um, this is the Omega line is all, all I can call it and if you could in your mind if you can take this line and walk back over here to to here to 2012 and plug it in right here the one two three four is the four generations when you get to 911 here you're going to be tested when you return to the old past you're going to be confronted with the sins of your fathers okay uh, this is Ephesus Smyrna Pergamus Thyatira this is the generation of Adventism from 1798 to 1888. This is from 1888 to 1919. This is from 1919 to 1957. Then this is from 1957 to 1989. Uh, but the, the, easiest, the best way, at least for me, to represent these four abominations is this is the image of jealousy, uh, the secret chambers, the weeping for Tammuz, and then the bowing down to the sun. So P was here in Arkansas for several months. He lived on our property in 2009 and did his presentation on the 2520. Uh, we discussed him working with the ministry there at that time. It, it didn't work out. But this is where he got jealous about what he saw uh, here. Okay, and, and I don't have a great deal of external evidence to uphold that claim I'm using a prophetic application I know that when you get to 2012 he begins studying with the Australians and anyone that knows Prime Minister knows that he studies in secret okay in fact everyone knows that knows the story about his prediction about 2014 is that he did not want to let that prediction out that he had been having a secret Bible study with a group of people and some of it record some of them recorded it and they put it out on the internet without his permission okay he he does things in secrecy so this here is where his secrecy begins and where he connects with the mother that's been hidden behind the scenes and the daughter who he, he's working with their their threefold union and if you haven't seen enough evidence of Catholicism in their movement now then you haven't been paying attention Catholicism is what is representing the Omega movement okay so so what I'm saying is here's where the secret chambers are put together and then from 2014 onward he's introducing methodology that comes from Rome I mean he, their dispensationalism it comes you can trace it back to the 14th or 15th century every detail of it came from the Catholic Church the dispensationalism that that he uses um, the the infallibility when you get to 2018 and and Tess is in this room uh, making her case that because this this history is the Omega history and it's perfect and everything before is imperfect uh, at, at first glance you don't realize that that's the doctrine of infallibility from the Catholic Church the idea that Parminder sets up uh, meetings individual private meetings between him and other persons and I'm saying persons because there's no distinction between boy and girl okay he's having private meetings with girl girls encouraging them to f them and men to tell their their whatever their secrets whatever whatever he wants to hear and he's encouraging it that that is the confessional of the Catholic Church uh, for them to be proclaiming that we need to apologize to the Pope or that the Jesuit order is a is a righteous entity okay this is Catholicism and this is what's happening in this generation 
in this history, okay, in, in Adventism, this would be 1863 when they introduced the 1863 chart. Okay, and this goes until 1888, where they reject the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, Ellen White, the messenger of the hour, um, and they go into spiritualism in 1888. And this is where all the famous Adventist heresies come in when they're in this spiritualistic wake of events from the rejection of 1888 to 1919. You have all, you know, you have. Uh, the daily controversy, you have pantheism, <coughs> you have Ballinger throwing out the sanctuary, you have the Mackins casting out demons. Um, all of that's going on in this history that leads to 1919. 1919 um, is where Prescott is used by the devil to lead Adventism into using the theology of apostate Protestantism and Catholicism. And this is weeping for Tammuz, this theology this hermeneutics is going to produce a counterfeit latter rain message. Okay, this is just, I'm going through the, adv the generations of Adventism. To prepare them by 1957 to accept the mark of the beast. And from 1957 onward, they're in such darkness that they're giving the Pope of Rome a medal. Yes. There is, I don't believe, any other date on that line except for 2014 when we not only had a complete interaction with Mark Bruce, Parminder Bayant, um, the Krebeck, Michael Chapman, Tyler Senna, uh, also the one, the Path of the Just. All of those evil forces converged at 2014. All of them were in one spot at 2014. We were interacting with all of them still. We were either employing them or working with them in 2014. So when the Omega apostasy labels as 2014 as a critical date, it truly is. Yeah, and, and if you remember at that time, what we were, I thought we were grappling with. I'm using a good word. I thought we were trying to sort through things. But it wasn't that. It was Satan bringing in confusion. There was there was like four arguments going on just on one, one subject, just on one subject, on Daniel 2. Uh, you know, Michael had his idea of Daniel 2, Parminder had his, Mark Bruce had his, um, then you had, you had, you had people that had their views on the insects of Joel, so all of the, the grappling is identified, and most of them that fall along the wayside end up resorting to placing their reliance upon the hermeneutics of apostate Protestantism, okay, rather than the hermeneutics that are established, if not her, hermeneutics, but the the prophetic methodology that was established here. They're, 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 and, and so it, here's where some of those influences that you're speaking about begin to get taken away from this movement. They're all together. No other year are you going to find them all in They're all together year. here, but from here on, the champion, um, rises. Parminder, he rises with his methodology, and what he's doing is he's preparing a counterfeit latter rain message, just as Adventism did when they relied upon the hermeneutics of apostate Protestantism. So it's... They're being tested by those four generations. When you get down here to 2019, on August 29th, they themselves say, I proclaim in Germany, this is our visual test. So what that is, is that's the empowerment of their second message. That's their midnight cry message. They put it in place. And... the. Up here is where that would be. Um, ten days later takes you to nine seven. Okay. Two thousand fourteen. What she's saying is the false letter rain. Well, it's also chapter eight, verse fourteen of Ezekiel. Is the weeping for Tammuz. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, weeping for Tammuz is eight fourteen. And eight is a symbol of who? Well, it's a resurrection. It can be a good symbol. But, but who is the eight that is of the seven? It's Rome. <laughs> yes. Just kind of a minor point. I, was, I caught this yesterday when I was watching your presentation of last week. From August 29th to 
to uh, September 7th. <clears throat> is that 10 days inclusive? Because... Okay. Uh, there's seven days in September. Yeah. Uh, 29th, 30, 31st. Okay. So it's, uh, I'm including August 29th. Okay. Uh, why, why, what's my justification for doing that? If I have a justification, it's down here. Okay, from... From... November 9th being identified on October 3rd here, and then the second witness of chronology 10 days later on October 13th, then you have a, you have our, the, the, the third element of our midnight cry message established right here on October 13th. What is the third element of our midnight cry message? What's the th three mud puddles? Ezra 7 9 is opened up by the revolutionary. Okay, what's next? Rafi and Paneum. And uh, there's a doubling on the second one, Rafi and Paneum. And then the third is right here. It's November 9th that's opened up on 1013. So this, this is the third step for us is put in place on October 13th. Ten days before November 9th is put in the record books in this room here. But it's a, it's a counterfeit. The, the, the characteristics that Tess and Parminder put on November 9th are going to be found to be all bogus other than the date. Okay, over 20 false predictions. It's an attempt to not only undermine the true message, but it's to prop up a counterfeit November 9th. This here is the true. Okay, so this here, um, 1013, I'm, I'm wanting to spend some time on this. I'm, what you see that this is a symbol of... It's a symbol of satanic activity, even though... It is the date that the third element of our midnight crime message comes in place. Okay, a mud puddle has got dirt in it. You got to go a little bit further in order to get to the clear water. Okay, and 1013 is a symbol of Fatima. That's when the miracle of Fatima takes place. And as Larry pointed out the other day, where did Tess start in her presentations here yeah. in September of 2018? Fatima. You have something? Yeah, but I'll wait for a second. Okay, so... That, that is interesting. That Are you saying that the very first presentation that Fatima, I mean, that, that Tess did here was on Fatima? Yes. It was. I don't know if it was the first, but it was right. It was. It was the first. Yeah. It was. No, when she started her series here, that she wasn't allowed to take any questions. That Parminder made sure everybody had to be here. She had taught before about the wise men and acts. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but yeah. the series first for November ninth. Yeah. The first presentation yeah. was Fatima. So you got to get this, and, and this is when I got when I got this line that was down here the other day, and I and I started kicking it around. Yeah. I've been under a cloud since then because I knew I kicked it around and had to come back. But, but I also got a couple, f some feedback from two different people about what they were thinking I was saying about Hiroshima. You know, so are you saying that there's going to be some Adventists in Nashville that are saved and some Catholics in Nashville that are saved? And I'm saying, no, no, <laughs> that isn't what I meant to convey. I'm saying that. The story of Fatima, okay, which is the story of the beast in Daniel's last vision, provides a, an illustration of two groups in Catholicism. Remember, it's always illustrated upon a struggle between conservative and liberal. And the prophecy of Fatima is a struggle between conservative Catholicism and liberal Catholicism. Liberal Catholicism is the black pope. It's Jesuits. Okay, The white pope is Pope John Paul II. In that controversy between them, they believed that there were three mud puddles. 
Only they call them the three secrets that were given to these three children in Fatima, Portugal. The three secrets. And right away, those Lucia, the one that survived, uh, who was told she was going to survive to the end of the world, but she didn't. She died in 2005, but she was 98 years old. Okay. She reveals the first two secrets early on, but they kept the third secret secret until the beginning of the 1960s, I think 1962. And when the third secret is opened up, supposedly it has three parts to it. Okay, that's why I gave you the, the overview to, to, to stimulate your sanctified curiosity to start wrapping your mind around this foolish Catholic prophecy. When it comes to the third secret of Fatima, with its three parts, you will find that conservative Catholicism and liberal Catholicism has a different understanding of how you apply that third secret. That's what was blowing my mind when tests started in here, is I had come to understand the story from Malachi Martin and John Paul II, their story of Fatima. And I was hearing the Jesuit story of Fatima from Tess. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I get it. I see all the history. Yeah, that's, that's the same history I remember, but I never heard this interpretation placed upon it. This is kind of cool that she's starting here right where we used to teach. I never thought, uh, it was long before I was thinking anything like that. But I want you to see that when it comes to that third secret, there's two primary arguments that are opposed to each other in Catholicism, okay? So what I'm saying is, the argument, now I'm going to step out of something for a moment, this is the point I want to convey. The argument between the true and the false priests, the true and the false prophets, okay? We're the true prophets, they're the false prophets, is illustrated on Carmel. And they, they do their offering first. And their offering was a corrupted November 9th. Okay, they were wrong on almost everything they said. And the history that they put in place to justify their position is flawed history. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go test it out. It was corrupted, flawed history. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and several other things. But our offering is 252 days later when fire comes down out of heaven and confirms Elijah's offering on July 18th. That's our offering. Okay, so what I'm saying is in these lines in Daniel's last vision, dragon, beast, false prophet, and then the, line, the kingdom of the 144,000, that these external lines, dragon, beast, false prophet, produce illustrations of the internal in this movement. And the story of Fatima and the beast gives us a line in the internal where we can see certain characteristics from Catholicism that play out between the true and the false prophet. Okay, number one, there's going to be an argument about July 18th and November 9th. We're going to say their offering, their prediction was false. They're going to say our prediction is false. Okay? So, when it comes to the story of Fatima in the Catholic Church, you have conservatives and liberals that have two different interpretations of what Fatima represents. And they, they got a controversy going on. And what I'm saying is the Lord made sure that there's a connection between Catholicism and Fatima and Carmel. And what is the connection? A nuclear attack. And when Hiroshima was bombed, those eight German Jesuit priests that survived in opposition to the 20 Adventists that survived is is all well and good, whatever it means. But my point is, what is it when, when Catholicism speaks about that miracle in Hiroshima, what do they call it? Miracle of the miracle of Fatima. Mm -hmm. 
So they're connecting the argument that they have in, their, in, in Catholicism. Their argument is over how you apply the prophecy of Fatima. And they're seeing two applications. One is nuclear attack. The other one is a comet that comes out of heaven at the end of the world because the Fatima prophecy predicts a great crisis at the end of the world and one side of Catholicism says the crisis comes because a comet's going to hit planet Earth and turn everything upside down. The other side says the third world war is going to be a limited nuclear war where some entire nations are going to be destroyed. So that's part of their Fatima controversy and I'm saying that we have a controversy in Carmel between the prophets of Baal and the priest of Grove and Elijah. And it is once again about July 18th. It's about a nuclear attack and our main point of reference to justify it being a nuclear attack is Hiroshima. Okay, I'm not talking about anyone surviving in Nashville. Okay, somebody on the chat was talking about, well then after July 18th then they'll still be there, but at Carmel they were consumed. So if we're representing Carmel and, and on July 18th the attack comes, they have to be consumed, the Omega. Do they? Was Jezebel, was Jezebel consumed? No. Okay. I don't believe they have to be consumed because we're told that when we're brought into courts, the ones that will be against us will be former, former brethren. And I believe that they're the most knowledgeable about what we're considering here, that they'll be in the courts with us. I could be wrong. Okay. Yes, but I, I, some I, I, of them I, have I, to get consumed. Don't be social justice fighting and saying, hey, their lines could teach this too, and they're choosing this this side instead. Okay. That, that, I don't know who's going to get consumed, all right, at this point in time. Because you you could take the leadership of that movement and get... You could get, take the leadership. You think they're going to be in Nashville on that day? If they don't believe it, they should be there. No, yeah, they should go prove that they don't believe it yeah. by, by renting a, a, a hotel room on, on July 18th in Nashville. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be in Nashville. So uh, uh, right now... And I don't know that we have reason to think it's going to change. Right now, you don't have free access to move from country to country. These people are from out of country. That's right. Okay, so if you, wanted, if you want to do some conjecture, <coughs> we can do some conjecture. Fat, when did Fatima take place? October 13th, 1917. How many children were involved? Three. Three. How many lived till 2005? One. One. What happened to the other two that were relatives? They're brothers and sisters. They were related. What happened to them? They died in a plague. They died, not in a plague. They died in the 1918 what? Pandemic. Okay, we can call it plague. I just want to make sure that we're... Okay, yeah, well, I mean, but I want everyone to get that yeah. now we are in the... This was... 2018, one year later, two years later, we're in the pandemic of 2019. So if you want to do some conjecture, anyway, I don't want to do conjecture at this point. I, I, I just want to, I don't understand it. So I, it just seems like maybe some of them will be gone. Some of the followers will probably realize it's false hey, and be it, gone. It, it, even if all the leadership is taken apart. out, the people that were with them can come into court and testify against us. Yeah. Are, there, are they not being consumed at this very minute, some of the ones you knew? I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. No, you can see. I know, I, it I depends see on what you define consumed as. They've been consumed. Okay, this is the third presentation on this subject, and I got to get through it and be done with it. So I'm going to move off of this conjecture, all right? Oh, that's all I have to say. She may have more to say. Okay. Um, f from this point, when, and I, in this, these meetings here, what, what was put in place is Omega. Okay. I can't believe that they like being called Omega. They accept that terminology when Sister White warned against the Omega apostasy. But they take that upon themselves in order to uphold infallibility, Catholic doctrine. So from this on is, is the doctrine of infallibility is in place, which was, 
which was put in place in the first, it was put in place in Vatican I in 1870. And the, if you look up Vatican I in 1870, it's a, a meeting that they had, the Catholic Church for a couple years, whatever. Um, and the main thing that came out of it was the doctrine of infallibility that came out on July 18th, 1870. And 187 is right there in 1870. But it brings 150 years to here. Okay, so we got the 150 in here that allows us to see 153, it allows us to see 1533 in this history. We have two other witnesses in this history to the 150. We have Elizabeth's hiding and we have the 150 years of the first woe. Um, so they put the doctrine of infallibility in here and 220 years after the death of Pope Pius VI, um, who was born on December 25th in 1777, I believe. Um, 220 years to the very day of his death. Uh, papal supremacy in the, the new movement, the Omega movement, is put in place as they excommunicate Stephen and Odilio for accepting July 18th, the same day that they do the baptism and tell their their female followers that if you don't put on pants, you receive the mark of the beast. Okay, so you got... Did they say that? Really? Yes, they say that? yes, they really say that. Um, <laughs> we got two witnesses that heard it right in the place where it happened in this room. Okay, so in this, in this little line here leading to, uh, leading to the second purging of Gideon, where it went from 9,700 down to 300. Okay, here's 150, here's 300, 153. You come to 97, you've got the 150, you've got the 300 right here of Gideon, right? You following me? You drop the zeros, you have 153, and that's at 97. So over here on this midnight chiasm from 97 to 111, prophesy again. This is where the three comes in. He's given us the message to prophesy again. Daniel 10.11. Revelation 10.11. The 63's, are you calling those of, of 25.20? Yeah. 26, they're 25.20. 63 is half of 126. That's what I'm, I'm asking you. That. Okay, 126 is half of? 25.20. No. 126 is half of? 252. Yeah. 252 is a tenth of 2520. I mean, this is all we've already uh, already established that. So when we see Naaman needing to wash seven times, we could say he really needed to wash three times in those muddy pools to be clean of his leprosy. Or 2520 times. Yeah, because we've always labeled him as seven times muddy Jordan. And those mud pools would line up with Naaman perfectly then, if we can label it the 2520, even though we see it. So yeah, it's a 2520. Yeah, yeah, if you want to go there, you're, you're getting outside of where I want to go. Okay, but I get you. Um, so, this here is where I got confused the other day because I had drawn it up and then I, I needed to move it. I moved some things and I, did, I wasn't thorough in my movement. Um, this is the beginning of the Levitical chiasm, right? March 27th. Um, 2019, but this is also at the same thing, it, at the same time, it's a center of a chiasm. I said March 27th is a center of a chiasm, and I'm going to say on this, this side, you have a shut door, that's what was presented in this room, and on this side, you have 1863. Both of these are speaking at one level to apostasy. Okay, now you can have a shut door and you can be on the righteous side of the door or you can be on the unrighteous side of the door. Um, but 1863, clearly apostasy. So this chiastic structure takes us back to 1013. 1013, 1917 is the miracle of Fatima. Okay, and um, so I'm tying it in here. And 97, at the end of this chiastic structure, is the separation, it's the shut door between that movement and our movement. Shut door here, okay? Um, so what I'm emphasizing here in this chiasm, if you see it, 
164.5 days to the center, 164, is that at the beginning of and the end of, there is a chiasm. And the chiasm at the beginning and the end is identical in terms of days. 63, 63. It's a 126, a 126. This here, this, this structure is about Islam. Okay, um, this is, what is this? June 9th. I hope I didn't blow it again. Let me look at this. I, I don't want to not get this correct because I want to be done with this. On your notes on page 6, you can see a, a bigger line of this. Oh, it's June 9th, okay, 2018. What was June 9th, 2018? Second Italian camp meeting. And what happened on June 9th? It was the 9-11. It was the 9-11 miracle, right? Uh, it, it, the, we end the Sabbath exactly at 9-11, and what was I preaching about? 9-11. So, what is this here? about. It's about 9-11. 9-11 is about Islam. The center of this 126 is August 11th. What's August 11th? Islam. It's about Islam. 10-13. What's 10-13? That's when Theodore recognizes the second witness for November 9th. And what was the second witness for November 9th? Yes, 391.5 is recognized to take us exactly to November 9th. And what is 391 a symbol of? Islam. So Islam, Islam, Islam. Okay, um, so this Islam is from the book of Revelation. It's the tidings of the East. So I'm saying this chiastic structure that leads to this bigger chiastic structure is followed by the same type of chiastic structure, 126, but it's about Daniel. Okay, because it begins on 9-7. This is the midnight chiasm, November 9th and January 11th. Okay, so here... At, on one level, what is Gideon doing here um, at 9-7? It, it, it's going down to 300. Okay. But Gideon's still kind of chicken. Where, what's he got to do? He's got to go down here. What's he do down here? He, he hears the dream and the interpretation thereof. Daniel 2 and Daniel 4. So Gideon's got to see the book of Daniel. He's got to be separated from the new movement, the Omega movement. Then you've got to go down in and see the message of Daniel. What about 11.9? What's 11.9? That's Ezekiel 1.1. It's midnight. But what does Sister White repeatedly say? She doesn't just say it once. In the visions given to Ezekiel, Isaiah, and John. Okay. And what does she say about Daniel and Revelation? The same book. So in the visions given to Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Daniel, and John, and every Moses, every prophet in the Bible that has a confrontation in the most holy place, is illustrating this history. So I'm placing Daniel in here as well. And when I place Daniel in here, where would I place Daniel? This is the midnight chiasm. What's a symbol of midnight? Wasn't midway in 1844, July 21st? How many days was Daniel fasting in Daniel chapter 10? 21. 21 days. How many days was he struggling with Cyrus? 21. And in those days, how many times was he touched? One, two, three. And on the third touch, what's he told? Be strong, be strong. You're, you're now empowered to give your midnight cry message. Back here, right here. Their midnight cry message, the counterfeit midnight cry message is underway. 
put on the pants. This is our visual test. Over here, our midnight cry message is in place. The counterfeit has preceded the true. And this comes from Daniel. It's about Rome. And that's what was opened up to us. That's what was opened up to us. Is that the, among other things, the new movement, the Omega movement, is preparing people to bow down to the sun. And, and every day it seems we get more evidence that it's actually turning them into Catholics. About Rome. Okay, that gets opened up here. Do you see that? So this chiastic structure with March 27th, the message to Adventism at the center is illustrated, it's bookend by Daniel and Revelation, by Islam and Rome, tidings out of the east, tidings out of the north, it's like the little books, bookends. The little bookends yes. in the middle, but they, they're held up by the east and the north. And although it is Daniel's, although it's Daniel's last vision is chapter 10, 11, and 12, well, what do we call it, really? The little book. We, uh, yeah, uh, we call it Daniel 11. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And where do we see Islam in Revelation? 9-11. 9-11. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't stop. So, what do you call that chiasm up there on top? I call this the Omega chiasm because it, 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 it's, 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 it's probably the wrong thing to call it, but it's showing the, the it, I guess you could call it probably better, the midnight cry chiasm because it's got both the counterfeit midnight cry and the true midnight cry. I, I did, I actually did that on the first set of notes. I put midnight cry ch chiasm and no, I, I said no I won't do it because I already have a midnight chiasm. But let's call it the midnight cry chiasm. Better. Or... Your notes say counterfeit. Yeah I know, it, because it, I'm seeing the counterfeit but the, the true's in there as well. That's the story. Is it the true goes forward in the time when the false is there. I mean, Elijah's out building the altar and getting the water while the prophets of Baal and the priests of the grove are still doing their things. They're doing their dance of deception. Okay, so I've, I hope I've cleaned this mess up from Sabbath and we can move beyond this. Um, I don't... I'm not competent in the cr chronology. I, I try to wrap my mind around it where I can explain it in a simple fashion. But the themes that are in Daniel's last vision, the dragon beast, the false prophet, the kingdom of the 144,000, I have a better comfort level with that. That's where we're going to return to now. Other than the ends of it, what is the significance of the 16... 164.5 days. Just, 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 a, just that number itself. I don't know. In, in the, I never seen that number before. Yeah, I don't know. Um, d d neither have I. And what's 164 and 164 is 328. So it's 329. The whole history is 329. It would have been better if it was 327. I guess if we do exclusive and leave this date out and this date out, we could make it 327. Mm. <laughs> I don't, that would make this... But anyway, maybe that's already done. For all I know, the way that Theodore has counted it out, he, I can't do it unless we check, but if you don't count this one, and you don't count this one, if you make it exclusive, then in theory, correct me if I'm wrong, it would be 163.5 and 163.5 and that would be 327. Yes? Then you do, then overall. 163 and 163 is 326.5.5 is one more is 327. I'll bet that's what it is. Just the, the way these structures are. I bet you this is 327 divided by 2. Because that's the center point. Mm -hmm. And if Theodore is watching, he can... Or Steve. Correct. Or, or Delio, yeah. Shall we pray? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the light that you're opening. Um, time is short. We have a, a great work to do that you've called us to do. And uh, we seem overwhelmed with our ability to get it all accomplished. But we know that through your providential leading, you have made sure that every footstep along the way has been taken. So we're trusting that you're in control of all these things and directing what needs to be done at the right time. We thank you for a, a day outside that is blue skies and sun. Um, and we thank you that it's not this, this rain that's been falling, although we do appreciate the spiritual rain. Please bless us in our day's activity and bless those um, that have been watching on live stream as well. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.